Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. All right. So yeah, now you can see it good. So yes, college applications. First thing is we're going to talk about what we're going we're going to review what we're going to talk about. I know there's a lot, um, so I may go kind of fast. Uh, first, we're going to do where to start. <clears throat> Those helpful materials, collegeboard.org. Um, understanding the difference, and I'll go over that in a minute. Common App, Collation, SSAR, Letters of Recommendation, at end, at the end of the application. So where do I start? It's going to seem a little overwhelming. It's really important to have an organized system, use a checklist, know your due dates, and establish and utilize an organized online platform. Consider the materials that are needed and double check college recommendations and requirements. Always double, double, triple check, always works. Some helpful materials, um, the high school transcript, a list of activities, previous volunteer information, hobbies, clubs, and community engagement, test scores, dates from college entrance exams, parent legal guardian information, and honors and achievements. This is all important information for your application. So College Board, um, they're going to provide information about applying to colleges. On the website, you can view a an area on it called Applying 101. If you go to this link, it actually shows you specific topics um, that are really helpful. Some of the topics are college admission, applications, how to begin, the facts about applying early, and early decision making. There are so many other areas too, so definitely feel free to click on that link. And then also, has some really important in input for you. Obviously, summer has passed, but now is the best time for seniors to start applying. Most of the application work is in the fall, and it's going to be crucial during your senior year. So also, I want you to know, to increase your chances of getting into a selective school and to account for colleges, you may not have considered it before, but consider it now. Obtain a balanced list. A balanced list will include at least three REACH colleges, two matches, and a safety school. If unsure about early applications, just always remind yourself that this is going to require you to commit early. So if you're not quite sure yet, then ask yourself, are you ready to commit? And I know there's been questions, so I outlined the difference between collation and common. Collation is accepted by more than 90 institutions. The platform includes the locker, a private space for you to collect and organize materials throughout high school that you may want to share. And then Common App is, of course, more wide, widely known uh, for about 700 colleges. Each year, nearly a million students use this application and submit over 4 million applications. Um, Common App, I know there were some questions that I wanted to go over. Make sure you're gathering your items, you create an account, you add your colleges, engage supporters, understand their requirements, you plan your essays, and submit your application. So some helpful tips about Common App. Use an email that you check regularly. This way the colleges and universities can get in touch with you. You can also view when items have been completed by me. Um, and then you'll get notifications. So it'll be a lot easier for you in the app. You can only add up to 20 colleges and universities. And also, some colleges offer free fee waivers under certain circumstances. So be aware if you need that fee waiver. There's uh, different forms of recommendations too. And I know this was a big question. You can actually invite and request recommendations from other individuals 
aside from your school counselor. Um, in order to do that, you can just go on the link below. I included it. And then it also talks about the requirements grid of a PDF that lists all the colleges that have common app and their requirements. I know that it's really intimidating using this website, so I have a two minute um, video for you. And of course, I'm not technically, cha I'm technically challenged. <laughs> And of course it's not working. So what I will do is this will be posted, but I'll also put it on remind for you guys. I apologize. For collation, um, now be aware there is a set of free online college planning tools that help students start early and stress less on their path to college. It's very similar. Uh, it's a common app. There's the locker, collaboration space, collation application, and my collation counselor. So like I said, very similar, but yet they have two different routes. Um, definitely look into it. It's an option. It's another platform. And then I know the SSAR. I'm sorry about that yellow. That wasn't supposed to come up. But that's the tool that's going to help you with the transcript and how it is transferred for the college. Some colleges now use the SSAR instead of sending the official transcripts. And so you can apply on the website. Once you complete the graduate, once you complete and graduate from Cocoa Beach High, then the school will send the final transcript to the college. The college university will look at the transcript and compare the two. Um, so students, it's for, you are responsible to set up that SSAR account. You can use Focus to create your SSAR or go straight to the source. I have that link there. And you can look at the specific requirements and deadlines. Um, what I'll do is I also have the number. I am so sorry I didn't show up. But the school number that SSAR has been asking for a lot, that everyone's been asking for, is 10-0287. And I can put that on remind also. And then military applications, you know, make sure you're working on those as well. There's a lot more in depth and they're due soon. All these applications are due at least, I want to say, 75% are due in October and November. So definitely get on the jump. And then letters of recommendation. So I have worked with Ms. Carr side by side and we, uh, she helped me create this idea. So I'm going to do a brag sheet for letters of recommendation. We'll go over awesome skills and hobbies and everything that you have um, achieved over the years. And then that way, when I make your letters of recommendation, I know what to pull. College applications often require students to provide letters of recommendation. Teachers may provide a firsthand account for the intellectual curiosity and creative thought. And then, of course, I can share my perspective using the context. And then other recommendations, usually non-academic recommenders, are coaches, employees, and peers. So definitely feel free to reach out. Again, Common App has you that has that opportunity where you can invite people to do um, a letter of recommendation. So you have now created your application, you've submitted everything, and I just kind of feel that there's going to be a what's next. So it's always best to have copies of that application. Um, you can do that with a transcript too. You can always request for additional ones for yourself and other related documents. When you have finished the application, make sure you have reviewed it. And then after you've completed it and submitted it, it is best practice to have that confirmation. Um, that, way, that way 
you and the college are synced. And then also remember, it may take some time to receive those updates regarding your application. So yes, you have submitted it. Yes, it's perfect, but it may take a little bit for you to hear back. It's always best to reach out to the college too, and feel free to take um, take a tour around the campus if you want. You know, that's what it's available for. Any questions? Okay, Ms. Carr, you had mentioned something that you had a, a couple of places where you wanted to um, add to what Ms. Uh, Haley had been saying. So I don't know if you want to jump in and add to uh, add to that presentation a little bit. There's a couple places. Sure. So I can't stress enough looking up each college that you're interested in and looking at their application requirements. A lot of them, like UFs, for example, is going to tell you when things are due and it's going to tell you exactly what they want. So like she was saying earlier about the SSAR, so UF does not require you to send a transcript, but they do require you to do the SSAR. Um, so you can do the SSAR. It's a different website, but you can link all of your schools and you can do it through like the um, courses you've taken through your focus account. So use focus to do your SSAR um, and then any, whatever school you're interested in, it's going to tell you the specific dates and most schools are not going to count your application as complete until you have all of those items that they require. So they won't, they won't even look at your application until you have every single item. So make sure that you know the application requirements for each school. If you just Google like UF undergraduate um, application, it should pull up everything that they, they require. Thank you, Ms. Carr. I appreciate that. Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely look at your dates. Um, and just like she said, every college is different. So really important to make sure you're checking, um, dotting your I's and crossing your T's. And Ms. Carr, you had one thing that you wanted to add to the Common App as a program. You, you, were, you, you said there was one thing you wanted to add to that real quick. Oh, sure. Um, so both the Common App and Coalition are two separate um, systems, but they're both centralized application systems. So you essentially, if you're on Common App, it's one application and you link a bunch of colleges to it. So it saves you from having to go to UCF's application and UF's own application and a bunch of different applications when a lot of the colleges require a lot of the same things. So it's just helpful to do one application through Common App or Coalition. Um, and some schools like UF, they accept both Common App and Coalition, but some schools will accept just one or the other. So you may have to have both a Common App account and a Coalition, but most schools um, especially Florida schools do Common App, um, but USF, I know, only does Coalition. So similar, but very different. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so if you have questions, you can go ahead and start asking in the um, chat box if you have any questions about college applications. And we're, we are ahead of, uh, ahead of time. So if you have questions about any of the topics that we've asked so far, um, tonight, Bright Futures, SAT, or college applications, feel free to ask. I am going to hold off until 7 o'clock uh, to um, start the next presenter, um, uh, Mr. Kellum for IB and Diploma Program. I know we're ahead, but I, uh, we, did, we did advertise that this would be a hop-on, hop-off uh, tour, and so I don't want anyone to miss out um, that might be waiting until 7. So if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box. And uh, we are going to hold off until 7 uh, for Mr. Kellum. But we are here for you if you have any questions. Um, hello? Yes. Um, I do have a question about the um, 
coalition like what was the big difference between that and the common app like i was i was actually starting to get a little confused by that miss haley miss carr would you like to chime in uh, so they're it's also a centralized application system some schools just for some reason have a preference of whether they use coalition or whether they use common app okay thank you yeah I, i'll add to that just real quick as well i think i think common app uh has 800 schools that subscribe to that as a uh as their centralized service and then um i believe uh coalition has about 187 so the by and large the the schools are using common app but uh you would need to check each individual school to check you know just to see what their preference would be but um common app really is is kind of your go-to source <clears throat> while i have the floor really quick i wanted to add something to the uh, bright futures conversation um one of the things that uh we uh, we have heard time and again from from u top universities when you're doing and you're you're choosing your 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 volunteer hours for bright futures. Um, one of the things that the universities like to see is a dedication to one particular thing. Um, they the, obviously the hours are what is important, and they they are looking for an accumulation of those hours. But what a college or and what a lot of top universities really like to see is a dedication to one particular thing. So you might have one service organization that you work for and that you've spent a lot of time with and that you might even hold a position with um, as a treasurer or a secretary um, and, and you, you are constantly working with that same organization. Um, they, they really like to see that dedication to a thing, whatever your thing might be. They like to see that dedication. So um, sometimes it's smart for students as they're preparing to look for their direction um, is, is to find something that they're passionate about, something that they're really interested in, and really work with that same organization to collect their hours. Um, it, it is oftentimes a great source for um, essays if you have to write essays uh, for the school. Um, and, and it just shows that you have an interest in something that you're willing to dedicate yourself and work towards it. And uh, so again, I just wanna make sure that everyone understands that that's, that's something that's out there. It's not a guarantee, it's not a have to, it's not a provision, but when they see a hundred hours and there's five here and five there and five here and five there, it is an accumulation of hours. So it's, it meets and it's satisfactory, but they really like to see that dedication to, um, to a cause, to a source, um, and that you're using that time uh, um, wisely for, for something that you care about. If it's also something that you know you want to major in and you can find a volunteer opportunity in that field, that is perfect. Colleges love that. And you can tie that into your college like admissions applications and essays as well. So if you're interested like in the health field, get into a hospital. If you're interested in education, definitely be in an elementary school. Um, Colleges also love to see, like, if you're interested in something like theater and you know you want to go to school for that. Um, I know a student who started a theater program at his, like, previous elementary school. So anything like that, like creating an organization, uh, that's kind of above and beyond. But colleges love to see if you already know what you want to major in or even have an interest in, they want to see your volunteer hours tied to that. Yes, and I would just add that, um, you know, part of the proposal for volunteer hours is addressing a social issue. And so you want to go a little bit deeper and, and think about what it is that you'd like to make a change in, whether, whether it be homelessness um, or, you know, helping uh, literacy and, and young uh, people you want to have some kind of direction in, in helping your society. So all good points, thank you. So there's a good question in the chat box. Should letters of recommendation be sent from uh, teachers of your junior and senior year only? Or how far back can you reasonably go to ask for recommendations? 
Ms. Carr, Ms. Uh, Mackin, you might have the most recent experience with this. I would suggest um, finding uh, those teachers that know you the best academically and um, your character, work ethic, and leadership. And so as you mature and grow, uh, I would suggest probably your junior and senior year. Certainly if you've been with a mentor or somebody for a longer period of time, uh, but you, you, you're wanting someone to really be a good reflection of your academic leadership and character. Yes, that's good. I would also add like if you know you wanna go into like a STEM major, definitely get a science teacher or a math teacher. Um, so ones that can kind of speak to your ability in that in those areas. Yeah, and I'll add to that uh, story too. The when we're talking about uh, getting you, you know your letters of recommendation, um, your guidance counselor is going to is going to give you a letter of recommendation, but their 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 recommendation is going to be more about the school and the programs.